good morning everybody good morning darcy beautiful angel good morning, good morning. <laughs> morning welcome everyone to awaken positive power darcy mata is here wonderful darcy mata and myself jemima <laughs> godsell uh, we are here to talk to you regarding depression <laughs> mental awareness and suicide prevention through awareness some heavy topics we know but we're trying to normalize this conversation regarding these topics just so we know we're not alone um we all go through stuff and yeah it's a good just to talk about it darcy and i are coming from a friendship place we're coming to talk to you from our sort of perspective our experience and just have a conversation to you know hopefully spark some inspiration with you guys um firstly sorry a few things which i always forget guys i'm sorry there is a disclaimer down below which we must you know just own it there um so please make it sure you read it and also if you need any help or you know of anyone who does need help there is always that 1-800 suicide lumber number i'm sorry i'm getting all tongue-tied today uh, but we're authentic so hey tongue-tied here we yeah. go um <laughs> we are <laughs> no no stopping no I'm, i fluffed no okay it's all just out and raw um that, that's what we're trying to do too guys just be like show up like just show up that's all we have to do is show up and just be ourselves and you're out with trying to be per perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. We are all perfectly imperfect. Perfect. Yes, no, this does. Perfect. No, yes. no perfect. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, so yeah, here we are, guys. And every week, if you haven't been here before, welcome. We love having you here. And um, also, I will say now before we do, because I always forget at the end, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Share is really important because that will help people get this message out more. Um, Darcy and I love getting together and chatting. But these are really important conversations too, which we think could you know, inspire and help a lot of people. And we want to be inspired by you too. So if you have any comments or something you want to talk about or anything like that, please write to us, like write in the comments below. We, we are looking for conversations amongst all, each other, all of us. So, um, you know, anyway, that's the nitty gritty of the YouTube essentials. <laughs> but now Darcy and I, Darcy and I are going to talk about today. What's our topic this week? Self-love, haha, <laughs> self-appreciation um why is it so hard that we can tend to self depreciate is that a word yes self-deprecation yes. yeah, yeah self-deprecation is it easier for us to do that than to self-love i have started my own personal 30-day challenge just to be aware of um start trying to break the habit of my monkey mind snapping into something negative and wow being totally consciously aware of it it is amazing to see how common I just snap into it, snap in pretty much, I mean, not to be negative, but pretty much everything. I, like there's a doubt that comes in or a, a negative that comes in and it's really mind boggling. And yeah. I will stop it because I'm practicing the self-love and hush it down and it's okay, you know, don't, I don't need you right here, right now, ego, et cetera, et cetera. But it's really quite overwhelming to see, and I'm sure a lot of us understand, relate, that it, it, uh, the negative self-talk pops in a lot more than the positive self-talk. The first thing to the forefront is negative chat than the positive. And I think that's really, really sad, really, really heartbreaking amongst us as human beings. Yeah. So what's your thought? You know, it, it's, it's in our language. I mean, it's just, it's, it's True. instilled in our language and it True. just, um, you know, in, in our philosophies, you know, it's all don't count your chickens before they've hatched. Right. You know, that whole thing. And, and we use negatives a lot, like don't run in the street. <laughs> so what do you hear? What's the last thing you hear? Run in the street, you know? So we, oh, how could you be so stupid? You know, yeah. and, we, and we think we're just, um, we think we're trying to get somebody up and going. Oh, don't be lazy. Get your lazy butt up there. Get going. Come on. Don't, you know, you're such a slob. Come on, pick up your desk. Just calling those names, it gets, instilled in your subconscious and subconscious that I'm lazy or I'm stupid or you know that kind of business my grandmother told me I was lazy every single day oh, wow. well you know what 10 year old wants to dust the house I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true. you know I had chores to do because um we had a three generation household. So we had the grandmothers living and with us, the parents, and then the kids. And so my grandmother grew up on a farm. Mm. And so it was just, and, and in the old days, they also had like 10 kids. And so all those kids had chores. And so she was, and she said, you guys have to have chores. And and the way of talking was to berate us. Get up, get your lazy, put your toys down. All you want to do is play, play, play. Come on, we got to do our chores today. Here, you get to go dust everything. Don't break it, you know. 
there's this 10 year old kid dusting stupid things right or um it's not exactly encouraging is it no it's not it's not encouraging <laughs> but Das, can i ask a question yeah uh, just a, just a point of view okay flip side yeah. I, I had a really my my environment was never like I was really fortunate to, to have constant positive affirmations constantly you can do anything you are beautiful what so is it society's commercialism that got me i mean i did watch a lot of tv as a kid sadly but i mean you know what you know what i mean like where does it it's well it, uh, okay uh, to be really honest with you yeah. i have this whole big theory about television mm. so <laughs> Yeah, so do I. Oh my God, so I'm going to just tell everybody, sorry, you're going to hear my philosophy on yeah, television yeah. and our frame of minds right now. So yeah. I think that there was a development in comedy that started in the 60s um, of putting people down, you know, really funny comedians like Don Rickles was really funny and people that you probably don't remember and Joan Rivers and they were really funny stand-up comedians but their whole premise was to kind of put people down with those kind of negative zingers negative zingers and so I feel like everybody wanted to keep doing that negative zinger type of comedy and then you, the, a lot more stand-up comedies uh, comedians started doing self-deprecating um, mm -hmm. sense of humor where they would make fun of themselves mm -hmm. you know that they they did it to themselves rather than somebody doing it to them then you get into sitcoms and we had that amazing sitcom of all in the family where we had the bigot father and then the super liberal daughter and her husband and so you got to see these two areas really kind of going at it head to head all the time and i think that the they took unfortunately the superficial aspect of that you know not the understanding that even though those family members were dealing with their own philosophies they still loved each other mm -hmm. and we're trying to work through those different philosophies the liberal was trying to make her dad see the world differently and he was really struggling with that what they did was they took that meanness the mean part and they started putting it in more and more comedy. Mm. And so you're brought up with these mean, with this meanness as being the way to talk. Oh, I don't know, what about you? Okay, Ace, let's yeah. go get that. You know, and it's all these like little zinger type of, of talking. Mm. And then you go all the way back to I Love Lucy and I Love Lucy was all about passive aggressive behavior. Oh no, I ruined the car. I can't tell my husband, what am I gonna do? So she'll lie, 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 lie until she gets found out. And then that permeated um, comedy as well. Somebody does something wrong, can't possibly tell the others. That's and so, so then they have to deal, 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 deal. So there's all this passive aggressive, dishonest behavior and a lot of this mean one-liner zingers in the, and we're bombarded bombarded with it bombarded with it till that becomes the normal way you know of talking and if you also look at nighttime drama one of my problems right now with nighttime drama is a lot of the drama a lot of the acting is all the same that we're delivering we're delivering the lines all the same. So let's take a cop show where they find the dead person. Wow, that looks pretty bad. Must have really hurt. You know, I mean, like they say these kind of offhanded kind of, hmm, I don't know, got to look at this one. It's not going to be pretty. You know, <laughs> this kind of like underplayed snarky kind of, I'm too cool to get upset while I'm looking at a dead body or whatever. And, and so everybody's kind of got this too cool for words a kind of snarky way of delivering their lines. So just those kinds of attitudes set us up with an with not being honest, not being compassionate, right? We're not being present and we're all about judgment. All those things are about judgment. They're all judgment calls. How do you think we're going to change this to us? I think the only way to is to do what we're doing is to start talking about 
what kind of language are you using for yourself? I really don't like stand-up comedy with self-deprecating humor. I don't like it when uh, heavy set actors get up there and talk about being fat. Um, you know, it, it's you so, know, so, it's upsetting to see people making fun of themselves. I'm, I know we all have to make fun of ourselves to a point. But it's not making fun. Even the words I choose then. See, I'm making fun. I don't want to make fun of myself. I want to make light of certain things because it isn't that serious. But yeah, I don't want to make and, you know, and it's a fine, it's a fine line because yeah. there's some there's some comedians, and I can't remember her name. God, she's brilliant. And she I have to go look her up. And she's a little heavy set and she can just really explain her challenges. She's just amazing. You know, I mean, I'm not I'm not dissing the whole genre. Course. you know but i'm just saying that that meanness yes yeah. that meanness and that it's that judgment mm -hmm. you know that we're being mean to ourselves because somebody has set up our standards of judgment and uh, it's the whole thing of um it's it's weird the way people think we're being egotistical or uh if we talk positively about ourselves right like if we'll we just, our fame our light our bright it seems so much more odd than if we disrespect ourselves. And that's right. just like, what? Now that's what I'm noticing going like, how, how come it is so much more accepted that I talk shit about myself, pardon you, YouTube, and then, then claim my beauty? Like, what is that? And I feel afraid to claim my beauty with other people because I might be like, oh my gosh, she's so vain. Rather than if I say I'm, I'm so ugly and fat, I'll be like, oh yeah. See, this that's is why I love Lizzo. I love Lizzo so much. I love um, Megan Three Stallion. Man, those two women, I just like, I, I love them because they just put it out there that this is who they are. And they're like, you don't like it? Walk the other way because yeah, I don't need way. you. And, I mean, I just, and then that creating that body positive, that understanding that beauty is how you yeah. see, how yeah, you see it. It's such a shame that we've, that it's so about our physical stuff. It's, I understand, you know, it, it, but it's really, it's the core of us, is our soul, our spirit, our, that's the beauty. I mean, someone can be as big as anything and have the most beautiful soul and be way much more beautiful than that beautiful, beautiful physical person over there. You know what I mean? It's like, it's the yeah, soul. See, it's, hard. It's, it's hard. It's hard to even talk about it because mm -hmm. you start listening to your own language about that, you know? And yeah, we are visual people. You know, my era was brought up on Barbie. Yeah. Right? Really? Barbie. And I never looked like Barbie. <laughs> it's like, let me tell you. I, did, I, I, I never did. looked like Barbie. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I did want to. I remember having Barbie dolls thinking, will I ever have that tiny little cinch waist? Which, by the way, is completely unreal. The dimensions are completely unreal. Like, yeah. you know, women can have that dimension anyway. Unless they have Botox in their tush. You know what I mean? It's like... It's crazy, but I remember thinking those days too, like, will I ever look like Barbie? And that's not something to aspire to, which was unreal, right. unreal, you know, right. surreal, crazy. I, you know, I just, I kept thinking that when I got older, I was gonna turn into this image of Barbie or, or something close to that. Some, so yeah, we, we are brought up with these standards that are imposed upon us that say, and, and not just in terms of looks, it's also in terms of what you have. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you graduate high school, you go to college, you get a great job, you get married, you get a house, you get a family. You, I mean, there's this whole idea that you're supposed to do life a certain way. And I remember in my 20s, I still had, I, I broke out in acne out of the blue, like major acne. And I was like, oh, they lied. I'm out of my teens. I'm not supposed to have acne. And then I realized, wait a minute. They lied about a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they lied about a lot of things. I'm in my 20s. I did not graduate college. I did not have the funds for it. And the whole idea of loans to go to college was not in my family's perspective. So I was just out of luck. Mm. Out of luck. Just go do it yourself. Do it yourself. Go to work. Do it yourself. You know, some people are brought up with this, or some people have within themselves the ability to rise above their circumstance, no matter how awful, and they just become these amazing people in and of themselves. 
And some of us are deeply influenced by our environment, our family, and our surroundings. And there's no judgment call there. There's no comparison. Mm -hmm. So this person could have a horrible life situation and go and get their PhD. This person yeah. could have the middle class normal situation and be a total washout because they have no self-esteem. It's really inside of them somewhere. Totally. Right. And so I think the best we can do is what we're doing right now, which is recognize it at some point in our lives and find the tools to start doing what you're doing, which is your 30 day love challenge. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Hey, can I ask a favor, guys? Can I just pause it? Because I've got to go to the loo. <laughs> I'm going to We'll be back in two seconds. Authenticity. Okay. Thank you, guys. I love you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> back on track. Um, yeah, so the 30-day challenge. Yes. Yes. So can you tell us all about what you're working on right now, what you're doing? Yeah, it was just um, I decided to, because I was a, I'm making a conscious effort to heal like really be a little, what society would call once again, our language selfish, I guess, but putting myself as number one, which actually Darcy, you're experiencing as well. Wow, it's a miracle putting myself first, get the hell out of here. What? But really, <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> that within that, um, you know, we, as guys, I think, you know, we can only give more to other people if we, sh if we can give to ourselves first. I'm learning, I know everyone knows that, but really practicing it. It's right. like, if I can love people already as much as I do being, when I don't just do when I don't like myself that much imagine how much more love I could give to other people when I do really fall in love with myself like I'm just so excited to get to that place that's Bingo. my whole yeah so I'm just I know how if everyone does that how beautiful and loving the world will be like Stu, I think it comes from our own insecurities and our self deprecation deprivation de deprecation de de deprecation thank you um mm -hmm. that we end up having this hate and and mistrust between each other because it all st starts with in I think if we can all do the 30 day challenge in your own pace, I'm not challenging you at all. It's your own inner challenge. Uh, what I thought was hearing my voice constantly as I'm consciously practicing to heal this voice of mine, this, this battle between hearing myself, everything I look at and see and, and it would be coming to this negative doubt, self doubt or hate, which is a hard, harsh word, but I'm, I'm serious when I say it, it was really negative, really. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, I would never even talk to anyone I love that way. Never. Like it, it just, it's just profound. So I decided to do, okay, I'll, I'll, with my 30 day squat challenge, which are up to 130 now a day, ouch. And my people who come to the gym with me. 130 <laughs> what a day? Squats. Um, and we're going to get up to 250. Right at my, up wow. And but my people who are at the gym with me, they don't know they're doing it with me. <laughs> and they're, but it's amazing, amazing. They're incredible. Anyway, so I thought I'll do this 30 day challenge as well. So I, every time I feel I, or hear a negative thought popping in or my ego jump in and go, oh no, you can't, whatever it is, or self-doubt, self, um, self-abuse. I stop and I just say, I don't need this right now. And I say, but you are beautiful. You are capable. You are, and find some sort of way of lovingly embrace myself. And at first it was a little challenge, a little more challenging than I realized because I felt sort of shamed stopping myself and taking time to, 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 to honor myself, which is really quite weird. Why would I feel shamed to feel mm. good? Mm -hmm. Like, what is that about? You know, it's a whole, so all these levels of questioning, why is that so hard is uh, are coming out? And it's still really hard, guys. I'm, I'm only, what, what's the date? 15th to the 14th today? 15th? Um, so I'm pretty much like only 12 days into it. And it's like, <laughs> and all these sort of things are coming out. But it is, I don't know, I have to check it back with you in 30 days. It's still really an effort. And I'm still in shock to see how often or, or how pretty much everything I say, I'm stopping and going, re reset, reset, pause and reset my, my mental habit, habit, right. the habit. Yeah, uh, that's as, all it is. That's yeah. really what it is. You know, there's a great book you could get called What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. And it's by okay. Chad Homesteader. And okay. I think it's C H A D H E L M S T E A D D E R. I think that's it. Chad Helmstetter. What okay. to say when you talk to yourself? When I first learned hypnosis, my friend gave me that book. It was the first okay. book I learned about with hypnosis. His whole thing is about our self talk. 
our negative self-talk, how we carry it around, what we've been um, conditioned to say and believe, you know, uh, what we've picked up. It, and it can happen at different stages in your life. Middle school is a really difficult stage for a lot of kids, you know, because you're going through all that identity crisis and it only takes a couple of bullies to instill in you that you're a big dork, right? <laughs> right? And then of course, high school is all about um, shame and, um, you know, dealing with all, all those kind of, you know, who's in charge, who's in control and who's being squashed, yeah. you know? So, um, yeah, what to say when yourself when you talk to yourself, and it's literally a how to phrase things so that you can take your negative self talk out of it and replace it with your positive self talk. One thing I'm noticing it right now is, um, like with my morning ceremony I do, um, I've thought well because it's so my negative talk is really loud is I do the morning ceremony in the mirror as well. And it's confronting oh, yeah. I'm actually really, for the first time, I think, really looking into my soul, into my eyes and taking time to go, not just look in the mirror, but look in my, my mirror <laughs> inwards and say, I love you. I love me. Even the way I put that, I love you. You know what I mean? It's like, hang yes. on myself. Yeah. Back in. I love me. I am beautiful. I am beauty. I am. So I'm, I'm, I'm still blushing. I feel awkward saying, oh, <laughs> I don't think I'm vain. I could talk. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Look what's happening. Yeah. Going, People, less is amazing. We're going to see in 30 days how different this is, but to, uh, that will help me set up. It, it won't last long because <laughs> I'm still, it's a habit that needs to be broken, but right. that will start my kickstart my day um, a little bit more peppy, a little bit more of a, a spring in my step per se. Yeah, um, it does. It changes your energy because you're yeah. not walking in there saying, okay, come on, lazy stupid yeah. fool. let's yeah. get our yeah. crap together here because you are not getting it together so let's try today boy is that motivating not <laughs> no hey i really like that person yeah i you know so <laughs> practicing it's you know that's the great word but my favorite word is practice mm, yes yes i don't have to be perfect i'm practicing i'm practicing my meditation i'm practicing my prayer i'm practicing my exercise i'm practicing i love the word practice because then i don't have to be perfect perfect yeah you i know, mean is it like practicing everything as well that like we practice 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 to move to our next step like we have to we can't get to our next step unless we practice what how to get there right makes sense i think kind of but you know what i mean everything is everything is the the, the journey as we constantly say, you know, it's all, which is practice to get to your step. Yes. Sorry. Okay. So what, what is your 30 day? Can you lay it out for us? What is the 30 day? Have you actually figured out how to do the 30 day self-love challenge? Like, what is it? How do you start it? Do you have milestones or moments or do you have anything specific that you want to talk about? With no, that? good point though. No, I mean, well, I guess I'm working out along the way which yeah. is why I haven't really asked anyone to, to join along with me um, because I had, don't really have the structure. I wanted to, I think okay. the idea came from, well, sorry, backtrack. Um, noticing that it's such a fiercely forefront thing, the negative talk, I had to start to implement the morning mantras, the morning, morning I love yous. Um, but really what I wanted to do was just every time, note every time I'm negative talk, be really conscious, consciously aware of, when it comes in and just take a moment, even if it means I have to stop the conversation, whatever, and take a moment to re retrain my brain to say, that's beautiful. Or as you said, um, re-dialogue, how you know, restructure my dialogue, um, which is challenging right now because I mm -hmm. all the time. Like and I notice when I'm sitting with my, my friend here, I'm always going, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's like, God, can we just finish the conversation? I'm going, no, uh, no hold on. <laughs> it's like, and it's amazing. So it's kind of confronting me right now. I'm kind of like really, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, it's, I'm really challenged by it. <laughs> it's a challenge, isn't it? And then um, the next step I thought was, was to help me was to have that morning mantra. So I think this process will, will, will outline if I, if I can then introduce a 30 day challenge to someone else, but I'm, I'm really working through it. And my objective though, is to see if I can, it takes six weeks to make a break a habit. I'm doing it in under that. So maybe not fully, 
but I want to see general like little things where there's not there's no reason for a negative thought to come in just like you know I'm going to the shops oh you're an idiot for going to the shops oh, no, it's something like I want it to, the general language to be coming as the positivity I want to see if I can shift it gently and notice that oh my god 50% rather than 100% is negative now only 50% is negative or you know working through it constantly to practice okay. uh, and just see or and just be for this 30 days just be aware of the process and if it's really stuck what the hell is that about like if I don't even improve at all like whoa because I'm going to be continue this forever because I want to change this work this this mind frame I don't want, I'm so tired of hearing me think I'm a failure when I'm not none of us are None of it, we are all so beautiful and we've all got challenges. We're all surviving. We're all here today. And kudos to us, like shake our own freaking hands, you know, and then, yeah, hello, you know, and that should be what we're celebrating, not this, oh, I didn't do this. And I'm, you're, oh, enough already, enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, enough. It's, it's, and it's me. It's, I'm the one who's, it's stuck with me my whole life, in and out. And I want to be my best friend. I want to be my best lover. I want to be my best whoever. And stop this hoo-ha. Like it's just unnecessary. I'm just it's it's so just so so saddening, so saddening. And I and I hope that the structure can be shared with you after I see what happens after 30 days. So yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I have That's to cool. do I have to make one observation, and that is your awareness is what's most important, and you've already got that. So kudos to you. Right? You're like, will anything change? Yes, something has already changed. And what's already changed is your understanding of how you're thinking and how you're speaking and what you're trying to achieve. True. And so that is monumental. There's so many people who go through a life who net, don't have any understanding at all of what we're talking about within themselves. I have a friend who calls her children names and she doesn't realize it. She doesn't even realize it. And finally, one of her children went to a therapist and the therapist said, well, why don't you talk to her about it? And so they tried. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. She has no idea that she's actually doing some name calling there. Wow. She has no idea. And, um, you know, so it's it's good for you that you understand that you know that a change needs to be made and you've pinpointed an area specifically that you can work on and you are working on it and you are being observant so you've already made a huge change but for you wow it's amazing i wouldn't notice that because the negative talk comes in yeah and, and goes oh no i'm not there yet i don't even know where a bear is so right. <laughs> so it'll never be there anyway because so that that's just another habit that needs to be broken yes yeah. so that's a, that's just another level of judgment you know yeah. just yeah and then you can also start to laugh at that yeah oh, i think I that's one of the huge <laughs> that's coming into play here is my um is the forgiving yourself because i yes. still think that maybe i haven't quite as as everyone well, if you haven't seen this before i'm only really 18 months in recovery which is still a virgin stage of recovery, especially at 47 years old and a long 20 year addiction, um, that I still haven't really forgiven myself for some of my behavior, for some of for who I was representing, which it wasn't my true self. Um, all those sort of little things, which I feel I still whip, pew, pew, you know, get that whip and whip myself unconsciously. And it's a shame. And I'm sure a lot of people do that with the self, the self-loathing for things they've done. The past is the past. This is one thing I'm really trying to re uh, reinforce to myself too. The past is the past. You can't change it. It's gotten you to where you are and hopefully you can get better and better, but it can't define who you are and it can't, you can't do anything about it. Like I can't do anything about what I just said two seconds ago. Oops, <laughs> gone. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, so what do we do with here from now on? And it's like, it's really, really, um, that self forgiveness is powerful because I'm looking forward to honestly, I can say I forgive myself, but I think, don't think my heart is really 100% backing me up that way. It still feels a little shamed, a little, Oh, a little, did you hear that? A little, um, a little, um, I don't know, still guilty over, over things, which is pointless because it's done and I'm here and I've got no reason because 
I'm making up for, I'm, tr I'm doing an active makeup or make, you know, approaching people who I've hurt, approaching myself who I've hurt, being actively constructive in, re uh, in, in being a good person. Great for you. Well, you are a good person. It's never, even as an addict, that didn't mean that you were not a good person. You've always yeah, been. My behavior is not good. Yeah. So. I, and you know what? The, part of the forgiveness aspect is you can honor it by saying, what did I learn? Mm -hmm. You know, I went through that, obviously, to learn a big lesson. So I'm going to honor my past behavior by really looking at what did I learn and what can I take from everything I experienced and now elevate it to a place of learning and just say, well, you know, maybe in my next life, I won't have to go through so much garbage to learn that lesson. But in the meantime, I'm gonna be really grateful for the lessons I learn, you know? I think, I think it's the, um, what I cause to others and I yeah. mean, others go, I don't care because you are where you are now. Like, for example, my mother, I sometimes go, some things I can't ever forgive myself for. And she goes, my God, forget it. Like, you're here. look what you come. And I'm going like, I can't. Because I want to, my whole being is about loving people wholeheartedly, unconditionally. And there right. I was beating people who I care about the most up with my behavior, with my words, or with my rejection, with my with my hibernation, with removing them like you, you Das. I, I find it hard to forgive myself for just going bye-bye to you. And you probably go, it's okay. You know, like, and I'm like, but I feel self-flagellation again. Come on, kick myself. Well, have you know, I have to tell you though, I'm really glad that you, again, again, your awareness and your awareness outward towards those you have affected is beautiful. That is beautiful. And that right there is the path to forgiveness of yourself. I've reached out. I understand. I'm looking at my behavior. I'm making changes. So I have someone in my uh, life who had really scary bad behavior, really scary bad behavior at a real crucial time in my life was just devastating from top to bottom and on so many levels. And so, you know, I kept reading all this stuff. Well, you know, when you forgive somebody, then you can move forward. When you don't forgive them, they have the power over you or blah, blah, you know. And I'm like, forgive them. They, they, they violated so many boundaries. I cannot even tell you. And it was absolutely devastating not just to me but to my to close close people to me i mean it was devastating and so i finally understood about what forgiveness means for myself of that person and that is i include them in my morning prayers i hope they're doing well that's it I do not want to give them a call, find out how they're doing. I do not want to invite them anywhere near my living situation. If they called me and said, oh, I'm doing so much better. I've gotten into therapy. I'd really like to talk about what happened. I, I'm going to take responsibility for my part of it. I would be willing to sit down and listen to them. If they called me and said, well, let's talk about it so we can understand what happened between us. I would be like, no. Mm, ah. Okay. I don't want you to come in and start telling me what I did. Okay. I want you to come in and start talking to me about what you did and what you own. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, I'm taking care of my ownership of my behavior, but don't come in and say, hi, I'm going to come over and talk to you so we can figure out what happened between us. And, you know, you need to take, you know, partial responsibility. That's not it. Yeah. You come in and you say, hey, I know I was a big messed up individual and I created whatever chaos and I did whatever bad behavior and I'm willing to own it great now the dialogue is open yeah it's like that there in therapy they say you know come from the I place like when when I feel this when you do when, when that happens on your end like I it makes me feel this way coming from the I perspective rather than what you did oh yeah well, you know I mean it yeah. shuts everything down but yeah because then you're pointing the finger. You're not taking responsibility. Yeah, was, yeah I mean, I, my last relationship when we had issues would always come in with, well, when you do this, it makes me feel, and it's like, I'm, 
huh? Like, I'd already go, when I do what? Like, but you're re- just already shut down before I heard him say what it makes me feel. Whereas right. if you start off with, I feel this, I would have gone, okay, I hear that you feeling something from how my behavior, which is your trigger, not not from right. My- it's your your thing you're owning your thing your trigger that rather than me being the person to blame correct so different way of putting the words right so you're on the right track to my mom really excited to hear about how you want to structure this 30-day self-love yes. self-love challenge um, oh, oh another thing i'm doing does sorry yeah, everyone yeah yeah, yeah. Is, um i'm consciously really being proactive in taking as many self-help courses online and read yes. um, as many as I can. This last weekend, I did a three-day uh, witch warrior um, uh, retreat, which yeah. was really crazy. I got this email and I didn't know who she was. And I saw a three-day retreat, an email, not from Facebook, not from anything, just email. I popped in. I thought, okay, well, it's free. I'll go in. Incredible. Absolutely. Incredible. And then it was three full-on days, like from 9 a.m. to freaking 9 p.m. every day. It was like intense, incredible warrior women. Um, and so that was just a kickstart. And then this week I've seen her three times. We were really good friends now, hung out. And also I'm starting to with this sort of stuff. You know, I don't know how to do some certain things because I'm just naive to it. I'm learning. But then there's another link there, all this amazing stuff. Another thing I did was this Reclaim Your Life. Another beautiful free, free everyone, you can find this free stuff because people kickstart their introduction with the free stuff. And it's amazing. I'm not taking advantage of it. It's there to be taken advantage of. And yeah. then now I'm now I've got this path where things open up. Yes. Um, but re- that's one definite thing that I'm, I made a conscious choice to say, even when I don't want to, I'm going, oh, God, this next one starts at 5 a.m. because they're in they're in New York, I think. Okay. They're doing it at like 8 a.m. or whatever. And I'm going, okay, but I'm going to do it because, hey, yeah. like what's what's bad getting up and trying to do something to heal myself? Get up at 4 a.m. I don't care. You know, any way I can try and work this. And it's only for 30 days if I don't feel like doing a 5 a.m. one again. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like do everything you can, like set a constructive route map to help you stick to the, the squat challenge, the self-love challenge, for example. You know, right? that what you're doing is really important because you're not isolating. You know, how most of our issues come from, you know, we feel bad, we feel depressed, we feel inadequate, and we don't want to talk to anybody. We don't want yeah. to, you know, don't look at me type of thing. And yeah. the, the only way to deal with it is to find a way to reach out. Even if you reach out to one person, just one person can perhaps lead you to another thing which can yes. you know those little baby steps yes. so that's why know. we're having this conversation as yep. hopefully somebody who's feeling i don't want anybody to know can say yeah okay look she's stepping one step at a time i mean from where you were weeks ago weeping to where you are now with yep. all your energy bubbling over is beautiful i mean it's just a lovely transformation to watch but you also know. does it'll be interesting to see like if this time next year we're doing it and i am a, i'm a pisces and i'm a woman and i go with the planets and i'm empath so my emotion my roller coaster and i've owned that i like i have to embrace my roller coaster rather than go oh I'm, i don't know where i am today but to see nick the roller coaster because also the, that's depression guys we know that those who suffer from major depression know this waves and coming in and out and to to see the process of healing and with this new step with you and I, Das, talking and, and this whole 30 day challenge, for example, the difference it will be because I'm doing this not only for me, but hopefully that we can, other people can learn from me. So I'm much more constructively working at it for the joy of it for myself, but in the in the hopes to help other people as well. But like, it'll be nice. interesting to see the, the roller coaster wave of, <laughs> yeah, wait a guys, yay. Oh, Don't yeah, wait I know, I have those days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, even being a woman and having Boom. Monthly, yeah, even, huh? even being a woman having monthlies, I I go with the moon, and sure enough, right now, you know, it's like I'm feeling the, the shift of my monthly my monthly hormones. So mm-hmm. it's amazing having to work with it. But yeah, so we'll yeah. see. Yeah, I really am happy. For, you know, um, hang on, hang on, everybody, one moment. Like, was it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she got her little floaty arm. Floaty arm. Floaty arm. So, you know, when you said you were talking to yourself in the mirror to give yourself yes. some positive self-talk, yeah, great technique to look at yourself in the mirror and say what you Tough need. One. And by the way, guys, when Darcy and I are saying that, it's not just looking at you like we're getting ready to go out. Like it's really freaking your eyes and really, and it's, it's conf- at first I was going, woo, like, a, and I like blush and I feel like on real 
down days so far. Sometimes, sometimes I've woken up really cranky. I've felt really, really challenging. And then I see that that look of evil in my eye at myself. And I'm going, what the hey? Why am I just darting daggers of death like you suck? Like, whoa! It's, it, so it's really looking into your soul, not just looking at yourself. If, if you're going to do that, guys, as a technique to heal. Just right. pointer. Yeah. I mean, I think there's so many ways that people absorb negative self-talk you know when i look back at if you look at elementary school if you public school if you have a little bit of self-doubt somebody in that circle somewhere is going to you know just pick up on it and go with it and you'll just hear it as a kid so kids victimize each other all the time you know yeah, um, kids can be cruel, they say huh kids can be cruel as they say they can they really can because they don't have that understanding of compassion and forgiveness yet. That's one of, you know, we have to learn all those things and all those things are concepts until we can really learn it. Um, <clears throat> and they learn by example and they learn by what they see and what they hear and, um, and they hear and see things from not just the family, but from what's all around them. So, um, so if you're gonna talk to yourself in the mirror and you don't know what to say, I suggest this. Okay. Louise Hay. Oh, I love you. I love that book. Right. Fabulous. You can heal your life by Louise Hay. I love this book. It's one of my favorite things. Bible. So at the back of the book is her loving treatment. Mm -hmm. And uh say if you don't know what to say to yourself, just read the loving treatment to yourself in the mirror. Every, you know, hey, that's a challenge right there. Do that for 30 days. Let's see what happens. Yeah, true. First thing in the well, morning. Can you read huh? it for everyone? Can you read oh, it? Oh, you want one? me to? Really? Okay, yeah. I'll get to everybody. You guys want to hear this one? Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Look Maybe. in the mirror, everyone. Look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be fun. <clears throat> no, this is a challenge because you speak to yourself saying it. Ooh. Oh. I don't want to go there. <laughs> Look, it's just like but you know what I will do? I will accept that challenge. I'll do this for 30 days. Okay. Here's my challenge to you, because you're doing a challenge, so yeah. I should really do one too. Yeah, you should be. Yep. Should be. And then next week, we're going to talk about how to motivate ourselves to do things like eat right and exercise right. And I'd like to find some more guests. But yeah. yeah. So my challenge for this, because you're doing self-love challenge, so this will be to read this twice a day. First thing in the morning when you first get up, read it to the mirror. And then last thing before bed, um, I say, just read it out loud to yourself in bed. If you don't wanna go back to the bathroom and do it or whatever is going on or wherever your mirror is. I don't have a mirror in my bedroom. Um, so just reading it out loud, however you wanna do it in the evening is fine. But first thing in the morning, if you find that you do that and you need to switch it because it's too emotional, and you don't want to read it first thing in the morning, be too emotional before you go to work. I get it. Then just read it out loud and do the mirror in the evening. Yes. Find your power hour. Find your power hour to read this twice a day. But first thing in the morning is superpower for everybody. First thing in the morning, whatever that means for you. The second time you can find your power, maybe it's when you come home from work, maybe it's after dinner you know, depending on your schedule, whatever. So find twice a day, twice a day. Okay, so here we go. God bless Louise Hay. <laughs> God bless you too, Das. Hey, you too, Jemima. <laughs> okay, taking a deep breath. And again, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And one more time, breathing in gently in through your nose, nice and full. And hold it. And out through your mouth, easy. Feel your body relax. That's right, there you are. Nice three deep breaths. You can close your eyes if you like. Am I loud enough, Jemima? Maybe just a little bit now. Okay. 
deep at the center of your being. There is an infinite well of love and goodness. You now allow this love and goodness to flow to the surface. It fills your heart, your mind, your body, your consciousness, your very being, and radiates outward from you in all directions and returns to you multiplying. The more love and goodness you use and give, the more you have to give. The supply is endless. The use of love makes you feel good. It is an expression of your inner joy. You love yourself, therefore, you take loving care of your body. You lovingly feed it, nourishing foods and beverages. You lovingly groom it and dress it, and your body lovingly responds to you with vibrant health and energy. You love yourself, therefore. You provide for yourself a comfortable home, one that fills all of your needs and is a pleasure to be in. You fill the rooms with the vibration of love so that all who enter, yourself included, will feel this love and be nourished by it. You love yourself, therefore. You work at a job that you truly enjoy doing one that uses your creative talents and abilities, working with and for people that you love and who also love you. Always while earning a great income, for you deserve it. You love yourself, therefore, you behave and think in a loving way to all people. For you know that which you give out returns to you multiplied. You only attract loving people in your world for they are a mirror of what you are. You love yourself, therefore. You forgive and you totally release the past and all past experiences, you are free. You are free. You love yourself, therefore. You love totally in the now. You live totally in the now, experiencing each moment as good and knowing that your future is bright and joyous and secure. For you are a beloved child of the universe. And the universe lovingly takes care of you now and forevermore. And so it is. I love you. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So beautiful. Beautiful. Now it's written in the I am. I read it in the you are because people were listening and that way if they yeah. want to lie down and listen to it, they could hear it that way. But it's written in the deep at the center of my being. There is an infinite well of love. And, and I always add the word goodness, which is not in her prayer, because some people have a reaction to the word love. Mm -hmm. Like they don't, you know, maybe they had a bad experience with the word love. Goodness is a transcendent word. So um, deep at the center of my being, there is an infinite well of love and goodness. 
So yeah, go find that. I'm going to read it for myself twice a day. Yes. Hello. 30 days. So what is today? Today is the... It'll be the 15th tomorrow, which is like when this will, people will get this. So it'll be the 15th of next month. Oh, that's perfect day. Let's start on the 15th of August. What's the moon in? Let's see. It's a full moon the 22nd of August. It's a full moon. On, okay, so Venus enters Libra on the 15th. Oh, it's the Feast of the Assumption of Mary, if you're Catholic. <clears throat> which is always a lovely thing. We certainly do love Mary. All right, so we'll start. I'll start on the 15th. Let's yeah, see. Let's start on the third, a third of um, August with the self love. Okay. It's been some long days. It's like I'm still really baffled. Baffled yeah. by how challenging it is. And remember, yeah. guys, if you do do this, if you do have some fun with it, remember to have fun with it. It's not yeah. meant to be so challenging that you go, I hate myself for this. Hello. <laughs> well, you know what? Then email that to us or, or you yeah. know, write to us about that. You know, yeah, I'm doing that. Louise, hey. 30 day, or I'm doing a self-love challenge for 30 days. Do something nice for yourself 30 days in a row. Yeah. 30 days in a row, say something nice to yourself. Do something nice for yourself. Something that has nothing to do with food. Um, <laughs> or unless you need to start eating right, then eating right is a, a that is an example of self-love, right? You need to I, eat. Mm -hmm. I think the whole um, experience that I'm really loving is that it's active. Like it's actively being involved with my own self. Like I can't get it from anywhere else. It's all within me to choose yeah. to be actively involved with myself. Like like I am my you know holding my best friend's hand and going, let's do this. Let's go and skip together. Like I'm sort of skipping with myself, and it's really exciting to um, even when I'm not motivated um, to think, okay, I'm challenging myself. I'm going to commit to this, but it it is taking my own hand and being actively involved with myself of actively practicing and those practice. It, it, it just makes it a whole lot more like rather than thinking about it and imagining or, or I don't know, it, it just. Yes, I get it. I totally get it. You know, as a hypnotherapist, when I have clients, excuse me, I make sure that they have homework. Yes, yes, Everybody yes. Everybody has to have homework. It doesn't work to have therapy if you don't have homework. You have to be accountable. You have to be accountable for your own behavior. You've got to show up. I don't like the word accountable. It kind of has a harshness to it, but you could use that if it works for you. Okay. I like what you said before, participate, you have to participate. So I'll do, you know, hypnosis for you. And that's great that, you know, it's like giving you a diving board, but then eventually you're going to have to swim, right? So yes. I want you to participate and here, and I'll give you some fun homework. Mm -hmm. I always like to give people fun homework um, and or challenging, depending on how, you know, what comes up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So good for you for doing your homework. And good for you for starting your homework, Miss Darcy. Wee! Yeah. I know. I put out so much energy for so many people, so much, that I finally said, okay. Yes. September, because August is a wash. I got to do so much work in August. It's ridiculous. So um, so September, I'm just going to turn all that energy around, put it towards what I want to accomplish for myself. And you're so worth that, Darcy. You're so worthy of taking time you like you are such i mean if you can give this much love and selflessness already imagine as i said before how much more you can give when you come from a place of pure self-love well you know if i did as much for myself that i do for others maybe <laughs> I, they have some <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right guys well, i guess that's going to wrap it up for us Dars. um thank you again everyone and we'll look forward to seeing you next week self-love Challenge on Das. Challenge Mwah. on, challenge on. Love <laughs> challenge. Here we go. Love challenge. Thanks, I love you. I love you. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs>